sir. Welcome. Merry Christmas. For those of you who do not know me, I am Pastor Shankle. I was called to be the pastor here on February 1st, and uh, my wife and I feel incredibly blessed to be here. We have enjoyed every moment of the last uh, 11 months, and uh, we are so happy to spend our first Christmas together. I hope you all received on your way in a parish news. There's lots of events that are coming up in the months ahead that we wanted to give you a heads up on, and also at the center of the parish news are all of those who are honored and in memory of that helped to adorn the altar so beautifully with the poinsettias and the decorations. So thank you to everyone who participated in that. Uh, we do indeed greatly appreciate that. And also included in the parish news is the connection card. Um, especially if you're visiting with us and would like more information about St. Stephen or to be added to our mailing list, please fill out the appropriate contact information on the connection card. And for everyone here, even longtime members, the connection card is is your ticket to anything you need from me or from the church office. Once it's filled out, you can place it in the offering plate as the offerings are received later on in our service. Some of the things I want to highlight and that's coming up in the months ahead, we're so happy and thankful that the Children's Worship Arts Program will finally be getting back into gear on January 19th. Um, there's a youth bowling tournament at the end of February, so uh, let's get together, have some fun, and, and bowl, and raise some money for the youth. Uh, the next round of the Faith Foundations class, which is an introduction to the faith as we understand it as Lutherans and one of our pathways to membership here at St. Stephen, I'll be teaching that class in uh, the season of Lent, leading us to Easter, and the dates are included in the parish news. And starting in February, we'll have a new Sunday morning Bible study, and the agenda is included in there. Tonight is not the end of our Christmas celebration. It goes on uh, for 12 days, and on Sunday, the first Sunday in Christmas, we'll continue our celebration at 9 and 11 a.m. with uh, special liturgies of lessons and carols. That's one of my favorite, <coughs> excuse me, favorite liturgies of the Christmas season, and uh, hopefully I'll see some of you joining us this Sunday for that. Um, we have been so incredibly blessed uh, with our music program here at St. Stephen. And I want to just take a moment now to honor that and recognize that. So please, let's give them all, everyone who participated, a round of applause. And that's in lieu of us clapping after they offer their song during our liturgy tonight. That way we can just sit back and receive the message that they've given to us. So thank you for that. And we are here this evening to receive the greatest gift of all that we receive at Christmas. And so let us take a moment of silent prayer, and then we're going to rise and join together in our opening hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful. Please stand as you're able.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As we draw near to the newborn Christ child on this night, we enter into the presence of holiness. Gathered at the manger, God earnestly desires to bring an end to our struggle with sin. Confident in the love that God has shown toward us through Jesus, we confess our sins before God and one another. Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the meek. We are quick to anger but slow to forgive. We have not put on love in harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace that all we do in word or deed may reflect your love born among us. Amen. I bring you good news of a great joy for all people. God has come among us in the child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. In Jesus, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and you are clothed in peace. Amen. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all peoples. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before Him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is King. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the people of heaven. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exalt and everything in it. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
and Christ is our light and source of everlasting hope. For those living in fear and dread, a new light has dawned. Christ is our light and the source of everlasting peace. For those living in hopelessness and despair, a new light has dawned. Christ is our light and the source of everlasting joy. For those living in loneliness, a new light has dawned. Now, on Christmas Eve, we light all the candles as we celebrate the birth of Christ. The candles of hope, peace, love, and joy all remind us that Christ is our light and the so source of eternal hope, everlasting peace, boundless love, and endless joy. The Christ candle reminds us that God's perfect gift was sent to us that we might have life abundant and everlasting. Joy to the world and peace on earth. Let us worship Christ, the newborn King. Let us pray. Gracious God, this is Christmas Eve, as we gather together to conclude our Advent journey. We celebrate that a new life has fallen. A child is born, and that child is our life and the source of our joy. He brings hope into the world and the promise of peace on earth. His love and heart. Love divine, and we thank you, dear Lord, for this, the most perfect gift of God's Joy to the world, Christ is born. be seated. A reading from Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verses two through seven. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken is on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. A reading from Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions. And in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope of the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. 
please stand as you're able. to St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her first child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Step aside. The slide up above my head in front of you represents the connection of Christmases in my life over 40 years. The picture to the left is 11-year-old me in 1981 opening up many of the gifts that you see pictured on the right picture in our current Christmas hanging off that tree. As a lot of you know by now, I'm a pretty big Star Wars fan. And back when I was a child, 11 years old especially, getting Star Wars action figures was a great joy and a sense of happiness at Christmas. So much so, I had so much pleasure and joy out of these, 
that I couldn't see myself getting rid of them. So now, for 40 years, since the late 70s and the early 80s, I have been carting around my Star Wars action figures and crates from one house to the next, wondering what I was ever going to do with them until we got here in our new house among you. And I thought to myself, what if, in my new house, I could have a Star Wars Christmas tree? So I dug out all my old action figures, I put hooks on them, I added a few new ones like the Mandalorian, and there you have it, my Star Wars tree, which has given me a great deal of joy and happiness as I've looked at those figures and remembered those memories from Christmases so long ago. Christmas is my favorite time of year. Not merely because of the gift giving and the decorating and the Christmas caroling and all those things, those are all good. But for me, Christmas was the one time of year where a sense of calm, peace, and joy entered into my childhood house. See, by the time I was a teenager, both of my parents were home full time from disability illnesses. And what I didn't realize at the time, but what was further compounding and com compacting the problem, was that with their physical ailments, they were also plunging into prescription drug abuse. As a result of that, we weren't allowed to open the shades or the curtains until 12 noon. The house had to be dark because it might wake them up and it might disturb their sense of peace. So life was not normal in any sense of the word. My parents were hoarders, so there were piles of stuff everywhere. In particular, I remember their bedroom. Their bedroom had all around it piles of magazines and clothes. There were just a little lile right around the mattress of the bed that they would use to get in and out of the bed. And if any of those piles avalanched, you could go into their room months later and things would be right where they fell. So the house was constantly disheveled, except at Christmas. Christmas was that time where things got straightened up a little bit. Christmas was that time where all of a sudden the lights of the decorations would break through the darkness, especially when we couldn't open the curtains. And the stale smell of sickness was replaced by cinnamon candles and baked cookie, cookies. And Christmas morning was rich because I think in a certain sense my parents tried to overcompensate for their dysfunction with their gift giving on Christmas morning. Little did I know at the time that the breakthrough of Christmas in that way to me as a young child and a young teenager would foreshadow the living object lesson that Christmas would become for me the rest of my life leading me to where I am today standing here before you. That sense of joy that Christmas brought into my broken household was also complemented by the joy that I had with my home church and the people of my home church who not only at Christmas but throughout the year would make sure I was connected to them as an extended family, sharing with me the love of Christ, the love that entered into the world at Christmas. And I could see through these events, through the gift of Christmas and the gift of my church, the hand of God wrapped around me changing my life, leading me to where I needed to go. There's an interesting phenomenon I've noticed over the last couple of years. Christmas is coming earlier and earlier, isn't it? Right? It used to be in the days before COVID, very few people, if any, would decorate their homes before Thanksgiving right? That was totally taboo. But this year, as soon as Halloween came, it seemed like, and it was over, there was a switch flipped, and all of a sudden, quickly, you started people shifting into Christmas mode, and I noticed on social media, many sentiments where people were saying, I need a little bit of Christmas right now, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay moving ahead with it. And it seemed like by Thanksgiving, did you not notice that we were already in full Christmas mode? That people we're looking for a little bit of Christmas. And that's what's interesting, isn't it? Because even people who may not celebrate the real reason and the celebration that gathers us together this evening behind Christmas, they still needed the same things that Christmas 
has always brought into the world. They were looking for some peace, some hope, some joy, some calmness in the midst of the chaos. Whether they realized it or not, they needed a little bit of Christmas. And Christmas has had a habit throughout her history of doing exactly that. Taking that light of all those things that we rejoice about Christmas and breaking through the darkness of the real secular world to give people hope. Now, the early Christians in the first few hundred years after Jesus' life, death, and resurrection didn't really focus much on his birth. For them, the primary focus was the things that led to our salvation, the things that earned for us the grace of God. In other words, they focused on the cross and the empty tomb of Easter. The other thing for those early Christians was that in the Roman Empire, the pagan gods often had celebrations of their birthdays attached to them. And they did not want Jesus to be associated with those false gods. He was the true light to come into the world. And so they didn't really want to focus on his birthday. But as history moved forward, and especially as the Gospels of Matthew and then Luke, as we heard tonight, became known to the church, there was a desire then to focus more on the nativity, on the birth of Jesus. So the search was on to bring an occasion by which the church could come together and celebrate Christ coming into the manger at Bethlehem. Now I have a little bit of maybe disappointing and surprising news for you tonight. In all likelihood, December 25th is not the real date of Jesus' birthday. If we take the evidence that's given to us in Luke's gospel, that the shepherds were keeping watch of their flock by night, that was probably not happening in December. December was a cold, rainy, miserable month. Normally, shepherds were in the fields in the spring, during mating season, when it was warming up and it was a little better to be outside. So it was more likely that Jesus was born in the spring. But the story of how December 25th came to be known as Christmas is another one of those living object lessons of how the light of Christ breaks into the darkness of the real world. For by the end of the 300s, December 25th was universally seen as, for the most part, the date those early Christians in the Roman Empire would focus on the birth of Jesus. And the reason for that was, when we look at the early church fathers and what they say about this, is that one theory is, is that in the Roman Empire, at that time, at the time of the longest night of the year that we just passed a couple days ago, the first day of winter, there would be a celebration and festival honoring the sun and the sun god. When those Christians saw that, knowing they had the story of the son of God, the light of the world, they thought, what better occasion to connect the two or to take over the secular celebration and put real meaning to it, the light of Christ breaking through the darkness. And from that day forward, in the darkest time of the year, we celebrate the light of Christ breaking through into the world. And that brings us to why we're here tonight. We and the rest of the world have been dealing with a lot of darkness lately, haven't we? For almost two years now, we've been walking and living under the darkness of COVID. Not merely just the sickness itself, but all the other things that have come along that have intruded in our lives, that have manipulated our lives, that have made things downright miserable at times, right? And it hasn't just been the fear of getting sick, but all the other consequences that have come as a result of it. We now have a whole generation of young children who are struggling with emotional and developmental issues because of the way things have been handled during COVID. We have young adults who are wandering around and lost and searching because the rug has been pulled out from under them for their future plans and their success in life. And coping skills among people of all generations has crashed and burned. Substance abuse and suicide are skyrocketing. And all of this 
has been compounded by these inept leaders that we have who are promising us a utopian world where we don't ever have to worry about anything that's going to hurt us again. It's into that world, this world of darkness, that again the true message of Christmas, the light of Christ, shines into our lives. On that first Christmas, in the midst of the darkness of night, when there was no room in them, for them in the inn, the presence of God broke into the world, into the darkness of the world, to remind us that our God is not far off that our God connects to us and understands us as human beings. He's gone through sorrow and loss and pain and death. And in the darkness of the night, as those shepherds had fear of the unknown, the good news of great joy broke through the darkness to let them know, do not be afraid. And to us tonight on this Christmas, for those of us who have sat in darkness, as Isaiah the prophet said in our Old Testament lesson this evening, a light has shined on us. So I invite you this evening to let that light of Christ again shine in the midst of your darkness. If you're lost and wandering, especially if you're young, let the light of Christ shine and give you new direction. Because it's a direction that will give your life purpose and meaning beyond anything you can find in this world. And for those of you who feel alone, let that presence of Christ that first broke into the manger, that continues to break into our lives here through the gifts of the church and word and sacrament, remind you that you are never alone, that because you are baptized into Christ, he is with you always, and you aren't alone even when you are alone. And for those of you who are afraid, let the light of the reality that Christ not only was born, but he lived but he faced our greatest fear by dying and overcame it. Let that take away your fear. The word Christmas wasn't used until 1038 in England. Before that, it was either called the Nativity of Our Lord or the Birth of Our Lord. But after that, it was called Christmas. And, and the origin and etymology of that word is Christ's Mass. To celebrate the presence of Christ coming to people like us throughout the world who are gathering in the gifts of the church to celebrate how Christ has, born, has been born to us and has come near. And I find it interesting that for even those who may not buy into the message or listen to the message or gather in the real meaning of the message, that they still, in a little subtle way, get that light of Christ every time they speak the word Christmas or say, Merry Christmas, the light is breaking through the darkness. And when the light of Christ breaks through the darkness of the world in our lives, the hand of God is cusped around us, changing our lives, protecting us, and leading us to where we need to go. Those early Christians, when they began celebrating the birth of Christ, focused on how his presence in the world changed the way they looked, about, looked at things and thought about things. So instead of in dismay saying to themselves, look what the world has come to, instead with joy they say, look what has come into the world. For that is the little bit of Christmas we need and we receive tonight and always in Christ. So Merry Christmas. Amen. Please stand as you're able.
Let us raise our voices together, confessing our faith with Christians throughout history in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Love proclaims that a Savior has been born to us. Inspire your church throughout the world to proclaim the good news of Jesus' birth to all who seek salvation, hope, and new life. Merciful God, Love cries to a warring world that the time of peace is at hand. Direct those in power to make decisions on behalf of others, that they nurture and sustain all that is healthy, good, and holy. Merciful God. Love sings through the wails of newborn baby. Respond to all who cry out in pain, despair, or need this night, especially all those we name verbally with our lips or silently with our hearts. Bring comfort to those for whom separation, grief, or loss makes the Christmas season especially difficult. Merciful God. Love murmurs words of comfort to a newborn child and exhausted parents. Bless new and expected parents or caregivers, especially those who are alone or afraid this night. Pour out your love upon families of every kind. Merciful God. God's ever-present love is proclaimed through the faithful who came before us. We give you thanks for Mary, John the baptizer, Elizabeth, his mother, Joseph, the dreamer, and all who point towards your love. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Please be seated as we have the opportunity to give back that which God has given to us by receiving the offerings.
Please rise. The Lord be with you. the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory that Beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. render thanks to you, O God, through your beloved child, Jesus Christ, whom in the last times you sent to us as Savior and Redeemer and angel of your will, who is your inseparable word, through whom you made all things, and in whom you were well pleased. You sent him from heaven into the virgin's womb. Conceived in the womb, he was made flesh and manifested as your son, being born of the Holy Spirit and the virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands when he should suffer that he might release from suffering those who have believed in you. He was betrayed to voluntary suffering, that he might destroy death and break the bonds of the devil and tread down hell and shine upon the righteous and manifest the resurrection. Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer to you the bread and cup, giving you thanks because you have held us worthy to stand before you and minister to you. And we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church, that gathering them into one, you would grant to all who partake the holy things to partake of the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of faith and truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your child, Jesus Christ, through whom be glory and honor to you with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. For God has loved us so much that he has given to us his Son as our Savior. Therefore, as God's beloved children, we have the courage to pray.
Please be seated. We celebrate the sacrament of the altar whereby the Christ child comes to us in a personal way in with and under the bread and wine and you are all welcome to join us this evening to receive that. If you're not comfortable receiving but instead or haven't yet received your first communion but instead would like to come forward, we welcome you to come forward and receive a blessing. Cross your arms over your heart and that'll be the sign to me that you want a blessing instead. As you come forward, we're going to have two lines down here on the floor coming down the center aisle and then you'll return to your seats by the side aisle. You receive the body of Christ from me. The solid chalice is the wine, the glass chalice is the non-alcoholic wine. If you're up on the upper level, you'll do the same thing in reverse, going two lines towards the back, towards the winter window with the wreath, and then returning to your seat by the side aisle after receiving the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God.
please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us. In these gifts of bread and wine, as we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On this Christmas Eve, We see his glory. On that first Christmas, when the angels appeared to the shepherds, on that first Christmas, when Christ was born, we see his glory. We see his glory. We see his glory. And we see his glory. As the light of these candles illumine our faces, it symbolizes the light of Christ a child in the manger at Bethlehem, a savior suffering our death on the cross and soon to come from his throne on high as judge of all. He is our light here on earth and the eternal light who enlightens heaven. Where there is no need of candle or sun, rejoice in the light of the world has come who transforms us with the brightness of his glory. from 
thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. It rules the world with truth and grace, and may Go in peace, rejoice in Christ our Savior.